What is going on, everybody out there? All of you beauts and beauties, it is episode number 121 of Hat Trick Hockey, which is always brought to you by our good friends over at GL Heritage, the official beer of Hat Trick Hockey. If you like the boys' hoodies right here, smash the link in the post. It'll bring you right into the merch store where you can collect all of your sweet HTH merch. And here, as always, inside Windsor Laser Cutting Studios, this show, just so everybody knows, is brought to you by our good friends over at Claru and Son Roofing. These guys are the kings of roofing. They do free estimates. They work fast. They work hard. In, out, job, always done right. These guys are beauties. And remember what they say. If you want your roof done, you call Claru and Son. Okay, mm-hmm. so you hit up those guys for your roof. I'll bring in my buddy, Tristan, inside Barker Builds. What's up, brother? How was the holidays? Holidays were fantastic, and thanks for asking. What'd you do? Time. Christmas time is uh it's always my favorite time of the year. I, I got to see all my family. Some of my family came up from the deep south in Texas. And really? uh, yeah, I haven't <laughs> seen them in a long time. So shout out to them. I don't even I mentioned it to my cousin if he wanted to watch the show. So if he's viewing this, welcome. Uh and uh yeah, I just you know, it, it's always good to kick back and relax, you know, take a load off, uh, get off work a bit, off school, and just enjoy time with family and friends. And uh, yeah, how about yourself? It was busy, dude. Yeah. It was so big. Like, we got the kids, obviously, right? We got three kids in this house. So we did like, so we did Christmas Day. We were at um, my in-law's house and we went there and it was it's always like full spread dude like eat till you're like bursting out the seams and i'll be honest i drank my face off okay but it was it's the holidays it's the only time that i kind of i really just crack it open like i don't care the wife is just do whatever she says do whatever you want like i'll drive type deal so and i didn't do it like the whole holidays because man i just can't do that shit anymore hangovers last me four days so i can't do that stuff anymore like i used to anyways then so the following day boxing day we were at drew's house producer drew so we were obviously at his house we did my side of the family there so we got together and then uh there's a couple of my buddies that were that were there came through too so it was good but like uh like freaking you were saying kicking back with the family and it was nice to have some obviously we took some time off from the show for a little bit so we could relax and kind of regroup shall i say and yes. figure out what the hell's going on here so but other than that buddy it was it was good it was good um let's address the elephant in the room obviously the show is looking a little bit different right now um mm-hmm. so rob has uh stepped away from the show for a little bit rob has been with me since day one um he's helped me out a ton we want everybody to know this isn't an argument this isn't a fight this isn't this isn't anything like that rob and i are still very much friends um so Rob just had to like step away from the show. Like I said, we don't really want to get further into detail on the show because I don't want anything to come back negatively on Rob for, for how much um, positive he did for the show. So exactly. So Rob, I want to say thank you. I love you, man. You, like I said, 120 episodes, man. It's pretty crazy. You're a beauty. We're definitely going to like miss you around here. So we hope to see you around the like threes games. And like I said, we're, we're still very much friends, so. Yep, same here, Robbie. Uh, you're you were a good buddy to have on this show, and um, I thank you for all you taught me about how things work with this show. And uh, yeah, you're still my friend. Uh, feel free to give me a call, and we can always chat. Your beauty. Yes. All right. So. Seventy threes. These you are, think these you think these guys are humming right now, or what? What are we now? Little. What are they? Twenty three? Are they twenty three and one now? 20, 23, one and 23, one. 23, one and one. Yes, I know. I know. No, be careful. Um, you might have some angry Lakeshore fans coming <laughs> in about that one. By the way, speaking of, 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 uh, of like Lakeshore, shout out Lakeshore because we yep. did that, that interview with Frazier and then yes. he, scored, he scored against Essex. So yep. it's the, it's the hatcher cocky bump because, like I said, a couple of guys that have been, been around the league here that have been coming yep. on the show that are throwing up some fucking numbers after they're on the show so yeah maybe so. they you know they you know get a little swagger going on and i love that shit it's good right. for the game fellas it's good for the game 
But anyway, speaking of the 73's dominant win last night, we had, it was Wallaceburg in town, correct? Correct. Yeah, it was Wallaceburg. Some yep. Memory sometimes gets me. But uh, it was one, it yep. was one, one after one. Mm-hmm. I was thinking, you know, like they're hanging around right now. Normally Essex, this game would kind of be, would kind of be a little out of, I don't want to say out of hand, but it wouldn't be as close. So, and then it just I seemed like after the second period, Essex just grabbed that dial and just cranked it up. And it was all Essex from there. Yeah. Final ended up being eight one. They had to have fired what I would say between 40 and 50 shots. Probably it was, I think it was 53. Yeah. Like that 53 to 20 something. I don't and know. That's, and I've been saying this since day one of the season. The more you shoot the puck, the more you're going to score. Yep. And these guys are ripping it from everywhere. They're teeing it up. They're snapping it around. It's nice to see. And I'm pretty sure the boys are number one in the province, correct? Well, pretty damn close if they're not. They uh, it, it, technically, right now, I believe it's a uh, I believe it's a tie. With who? Oh no, they're they're first. <laughs> okay, I was gonna say like so. So, lost so they oh, okay. Sorry, they are tied. Uh, there is one team, although they have four less game played than Essex right now, or five, three less. Uh, Stainer Siskins. Uh, they are twenty-two and or twenty-one and one. Wow. So they're they're very good right now. But other than that, Essex has been. Uh, and, Let's say uh, Essex also has. Even though Essex has three more games played than the Siskins, they still have two less goals against. Wow. So that speaks to their defensive game that Jamie McDermott has been instilling into them. Uh, same with their goaltending. Fantastic. Kevin McCabe, once again, only allowing one goal last yeah. night. Adrian McBride, same deal. Just phenomenal goaltenders and phenomenal scouting job done there by Mike Paley and co. Uh, Riley Jones and all the other assorted yeah. staff that for make sure. the choices on these guys for sure those guys are fucking man you put those two together man jonesy and fucking pales it's it's a nasty combination man there there's a lot of hockey knowledge and a lot like like they said jonesy knows every junior player from here to london like off the top of his head like it's insane yeah. so he's nasty when it comes to this so he they're those two i think are perfect together they're running an absolute wagon right now too so oh yeah everything's looking good um yeah, so last night they won eight one. Um, notables for 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 the game, you had a bunch of them, right? You said guys had points, and yeah. So, um, I, Luke Shirk had a goal and three assists for yeah. four points. Jacob Crookshank decided to go beast mode. He had a he had an end to end goal on the back end, mm-hmm. cut it in short side on the back end. It was uh, I want to say he had he had a goal and two assists himself, and then uh, the return of. I have to say it, it's biased. This guy can do no wrong uh, in my eyes. Adam Dunn, mm-hmm. uh, he comes back from well, back for four games, but um, just a fantastic defenseman. Mm-hmm. Sees the ice better than anyone else in this league as far as uh, defenders go. He steps on that ice and he can use the boards, center of the ice, his breakout, whether he's with the puck or passing it. Just phenomenal. Like mm-hmm. he's his rush chances that he creates on his own. Really good defenseman. And he had three apples last night and was a plus five. So mm. props to him. Didn't someone get their first goal last night too? Yes, they did. A couple McCracken, guys. Kraken, I believe. I think he yeah. scored twice, did he not? Right. Yeah. yeah see, McCracken. I'm dialed in, Tristan. I'm paying yes. attention. I'm listening yes. to those fucking announcements when they're talking at the rate. Yep. Connor McCracken, uh, <laughs> yeah. crack. He uh, puts up two and he uh, scored good a good for him. one of them was a beauty too. It was. It was. Yeah. The, uh, shout out Connor Emery. Uh, recently signed AP by the threes. He's a defenseman from Bell River. He uh, scored his first, so good for him. Nice. Couple first yeah. goals last night for the fellas. Pucks right are on. flying out of the room like they're fucking going out of style. I love it. Yeah. Hey, man. You, like I said, the part that I love the most about this team is how much they shoot the puck. Mm-hmm. And it's fucking, like I said, when you fire 50, 60 shots a game, Chances are you're going to score on four or five of those. And mm-hmm. with the way those two are playing in net right now, I like my chances when I'm scoring four or five goals a game and the way they got those two in net. So, yeah, buzzing, complete yep. buzzing. Also, how's um? have you heard anything when it comes to like Lakeshore or anything on how everything's going out in Lakeshore or Wheatley or anything like that? 
Right I know Lakeshore is on the road tonight. I believe they're playing tonight. This being, um, this being so Wednesday night. Lakeshore is still uh, in second. Uh, they're nineteen and four and one right now, so they're doing well. Oh they're yeah, themselves. And one of those wins is a one against the seventy threes in overtime, which yeah. props to them. They took it to them. Yeah, they Essex did. might have been shorthanded, but that doesn't take away from the fact that mm-hmm. Lakeshore won the game. So yeah, we're uh, battling a little bit of the injury bug right now, eh? They are, but they were able to have two returning players last night. Uh, also shout out to our boy Connor Dembinski. Yeah. Repping Where? the Capitan. Yeah. Wearing C. the C. Yep. So uh looked good on you, kid. <laughs> he's deserving. Yeah. yeah, he's he's one one heck of a player, and uh Jamie seems to agree with that as well as management. So with um Jake Fields being out, uh they gave the C to Dembo as well as they have given it to Liam Hall in the past. So Luke. good to see those guys. I believe Shirky had it the last home game too. Shirky okay. had it one one week too. I don't know if you were there or not. I uh, I I missed a few games. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So uh, so yeah, Ethan and boys... I went to the game before the break. Oh, sorry. The last home game before the break, we went yeah. to and 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 Shirky was wearing the C that night. Okay, versus Wheatley, eh? Yes. Okay. Exactly. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. And so... speaking of the Sharks, they. What'd you say? They are, they are 13, seven and three, which isn't horrible either. Like, no, but they're fourth. Now they have fallen to the Blenheim blade, Todd or Todd Warner's Blenheim blades. Oh yeah. But, uh, they are, you, you beauties better listen to that fucking interview that we dropped there with Todd Warner. He's a legend. Absolute legend. That guy beauty. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the blades are 16, nine and two making a bit of a, Bit of a climb up the standings, so good mm-hmm. for them. It'll be an interesting playoffs. As of now, Essex would be playing the Wallaceburg Thunderhawks if playoffs were to start right now. So, Ouch. That, enough said. <laughs> but uh, the the Thunderhawks currently are say they're uh, currently like we what? always say, like we always say. Um, we we love all the teams, right? Yes, of course we do. Casting no shade. But that being said, the Thunderhawks are three twenty and one, so Oof. it's a little rough. Yeah, we'll see. Double digits by the end of the season, and it's playoffs. Every, everything resets, baby. So yeah, you never know. They and could the maybe score a goal on Essex. Exactly. Any anything can happen. <laughs> <laughs> I just caught. That. I just caught that. I love it. That's no, no fun. offense to them. No, I'm. You know what? Those guys play their heart out. They're a young team. Let's just face it, though. Essex is a fucking absolute wagon. Right, yeah. And like, you know they're... what? The resources here in Essex, they're a hockey town and yeah. out, out in Wallaceburg. And the, it's a grind for them to try and work hard. So props to them to be able to play junior hockey and work their butts off, you know? Good for what them. I like about them, too, what I noticed with them last night is they're very physical. Yeah, they don't give up. They hit a lot. They give you that extra push after the yep. whistle. They'll, you know, get away from my goalie type stuff. Yeah, it's, they understand. Yeah. Hey, we're not going to listen, they, boys. Likely we're walking into a game where we're the team that's not as good as the other one, but they don't let that stop them from playing a good hockey game. Like yeah, they they scored the – they tied the game, right? Yeah. Where did they score the first? No, they tied uh, the game. They yeah, tied they the tied game. it, I think. Because they almost scored the first, and I was about to lose my mind. But yeah. They also hit, like I think I think, two or three posts at least, too. I know I yes. seen yeah, they definitely were. two for sure, like right in front of me where I was sitting. There was two. No, they were they were getting some uh, good chances. So props because to them, and I wish them well in the rest of their season. Who knows? Maybe they go on a run. They don't have to face Essex. Maybe they can take out Lakeshore. Yeah, you never know. First round. It's the playoffs. You never know. Like wishful you never thinking. Never know. Eh? Wishful thinking. Um. All right, World Juniors, bud. World Juniors. Obviously, if you don't live under a fucking rock right now, you're yep. probably watching the World Juniors, okay? We're not right now because we're sitting here recording an episode for you beauties. Right. <laughs> so, also, no offense to those under the rock dwellers who yes. aren't watching it. <laughs> Talk. Uh, but uh, anyway, so then Connor Bedard, dude. Connor Bedard, this kid is ridiculous. That goal that he got in overtime was straight nasty. 
it, and everybody they like like they asked him like oh how did you do he's like oh i couldn't get the shot through so i figured i had to do something that was what he said so that's cold hey man we'll we'll take it you know <laughs> we'll what? take it Connor bedard if all goes well for him forward in his career could be the greatest player i ever see in my lifetime yeah he's nasty He's going to be one of those kids, too. He's going to go straight out of junior, right into the league, and he's never going to leave the NHL. No. So think <laughs> think of McDavid and the numbers that he was putting up. Mm. Bedard has done similar, if not better. Also, I believe it was Eric Lindros for the all-time single tournament scoring for Canada. Yeah. And he did yeah. that in five games. Mm-hmm. Five. He's had five games. He's had a seven point game. He's had a six point game. I think he's got two hat tricks. It's he's, ridiculous. He scored tonight. I know that. It's ridiculous. So Which... as of right now, so now tonight, then he counting tonight, this will be his 15th world junior game. He has 33 points in 15 games. Um, Lindros had 31, but it took him 21 games. Yeah. there. You so go. it took him four less. To get and, two more points. And he could still possibly have another two games in this tournament. Right? So that kid's fucking phenomenal. Let's you wanted to um you said something about the draft class this year. Yes. So first of all, let me tell everyone who's listening to this, fans of hockey, non fans of hockey, but if you're listening to this, welcome. Don't know why you're here. Uh, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> yes, welcome. Anyway, uh, this draft class, in my opinion, will be the best one I have seen uh, to this date in my lifetime. So, in the since the since the year two thousand and three, understandably, two thousand and fifteen was a major draft class, the McDavid draft class, mm -hmm. crazy stuff. Matthew Barzell going late and uh, Alex DeBrinket in the second round, crazy stuff. I understand that, but. At this year, we the top five picks who, as of this time, are looking like this is just a consensus. Yeah, Connor Bedard won because who else? Of course, yeah. Adam Adam Fantilli too, who is also on Team Canada right now, but he's playing a much more limited role, breaking records for the Michigan Wolverines as a freshman. Uh, number three, bit of a toss up, but I'd say Matvey Michkov. Uh, mm -hmm. who, unfortunately, Russia isn't playing at the World Juniors because of banment, but course, uh, yeah. we don't see them. He is destroying the KHL as a rookie. He's like a smaller Ovechkin. He's got a laser of a shot. Some might say his potential, this is barring any sort of translation to the NHL game, but some might say he could be better than Bedard. Mm -hmm. And that says something based on every stat we just told you. Yeah. Number number four, I would say, is Leo Carlson, who's currently uh he lost tonight, but um he had a fantastic tournament. Uh and he's probably he's just, he's a centerman, great, like tall, lean. He's got that really strong build, always mm -hmm. wiry, good face offs. Another franchise talent. Like everyone in this top five is gonna be crazy. There's there's a oh, there's another guy who I wanted to say. Oh, so and I will say this too. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a Wings fan. So are you, of course, Ant? Of course, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, no Steve Eiserman. Yes, go Wings. <laughs> He's currently at the um, World Juniors, obviously, as are many GMs, uh, scouting with the scouting team. But Stevie Y in particular was watching the Czech Republic versus Sweden game today, in which the Czechs ended up moving on. So they will be in the gold medal round. But. I have a feeling, this is just my opinion, Ant, that Edward Schale, who is playing on Team Czechia, he's projected to go around the 10th pick to 15th. Wings, on a bit of a slide right now, they're projected, as of now, to be fitting rate right at the 11th pick, <laughs> if they were to continue on their pace in the past 10 games. Could be a fantastic Steve Eisman pick. He's one of those guys, you know, maybe he's not that great right now, which he is because it's the 2023 draft yeah. class. Yeah, of course. But he has the potential to be a elite, elite, all-around, two-way playmaking guy. You, like, I say this, and 
this guy is my favorite player growing up. So this is says a lot when I say it. He reminds me of Pavel Datsuk, just a winger. Yeah. And he can also play the center ice position. He's just one of those guys who he gets the puck and makes it happen. And if he doesn't have the puck, oh, well, sorry, bud. I'm taking it back from you. Yeah. That's just how he is. He's getting it from you, and he's going to the other end of the ice, and he's scoring. Or he's passing it through his legs, and he encourage anyone. Go online, look up Edward Shelley highlights, especially if you're a Wings fan, because that's who Stevie Y is putting under the microscope. And you fucking heard it here first, too, by the way. Yep, there you go. <laughs> fucking there, dude, you are fucking dialed. In I, right I'm feeling like, it, you know? How do you know all this stuff on these kids, man? So I every year, um, I, if you guys ever want to check out my personal YouTube, it's just Tristan McGuire. Okay. Uh, there's a couple of 73s videos Smash on there. Smash that but... follow button, guys. Smash yeah, that yeah, follow yeah. button. Yeah, of course. I've got 18 subscribers with just some playlists, so I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm impressed. But, oh, um, boy. <laughs> but uh, on the playlists, I always keep a playlist for the current draft class. So I will do the top 30 or 40 guys, and I will have every draft highlight video. So uh, I, I really like to examine the draft class, especially since the wings have always been kind of lower echelon of the team. Mm -hmm. So I, I like the scout like last year. And I always get this one player who's in my mind and I'm like, this is who I want. And then Stevie Y goes in the other direction. But, uh, mm -hmm. I, but this year I think Shawley is the kind of player that Eisman would look at. And uh, like, you know what? It's, it's going to be a nuts draft mm -hmm. class this year and next year. Like there's a 15 year old or you might be 16 now, 16 year old playing on Finland. He's a defenseman. Aaron Kivyaharu. He's supposed to go first next year. He like what? What was his name? Aaron Kivyahariu. I'm not even gonna try to fucking say that. But it's holy... it, it, in layman's term, Aaron Kiviharu. Oh, okay. So that would be or my are you? So that's ant terms. Yes, I okay. I try to always be accurate <laughs> to the accent. So if there's that. One person who's listening who's maybe is no, finished. it's not. No, it's not bad. I was just saying, it just the name threw me off, and I couldn't believe that you knew that name like that. Oh yeah, it's so just, well. There's, hey, who else grinds a franchise mode in NHL 23? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. I've dude, been playing NHL since I've been like five, so dude, I love then, it. Are you okay? I have to ask you this now. We're gonna get off topic here because we're gonna all right, all right. probably talk about this for ten minutes. Okay, so I play NHL as well. So I play okay. twenty three as well. Yeah, I have a team online, a club under the pod, the podcast name. So really funny. So yeah, so funny story. So me and my fucking buddy, we play, mm -hmm. and um, so we were playing these one guys one night. We just laid out ass whooping on them, and then. uh I get a message on or on a comment or whatever message on our YouTube channel. And it was the guy like, Hey, were you guys just playing NHL? And I was like, yeah. I was like, why did you just play us? And he's like, yeah, you guys just whooped on me and my buddies. <laughs> but yeah. Funny. So we actually got a couple followers of the show because we played NHL. That's awesome. So, and I put it under the podcast name. I was actually thinking I was going to, um, are you talking PS4? Yeah, PS4. Okay. okay. We're going to have to add you to the squad, kid. Of course. I'm gross. We'll fucking snap it around here. Listen, what are we, I what might are we be doing, the biggest bro? bender you have ever seen on Real Ice, but these thumbs? <laughs> he will oh, never no. lose. He'll he'll never lose a thumb more. Oh, and, and I'm actually unreal as a goalie. If you ever need a tendy, I'm your man. Dude, come on, man. Like I'm, I'm adding you to the squad. So right, anyways, let's go. Let's go. We'll, we'll uh we'll we'll figure that out after. Anyway, now that we're now that we're done geeking out over each other right here. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> so we'll move on. Winter Classic. It was a fantastic game. So the Pens and the and the Bruins played at Fenway January second. They played in front of thirty nine thousand two hundred and forty three fans. Uh, Pittsburgh took a one nothing lead, but as always, you can't count out the bees. The bees scored the next two goals, winning the game. They scored it with 12, 14 left and the winner coming with two minutes, 24 seconds left scored by surprise, surprise, Jake DeBrusque. Yep. And now we just got some other shitty news on Jake tonight. Did we not? Yes. So, uh, a couple, a couple days ago, it was Jake DeBrusque 
beats the Penguins, and now it's Jake DeBrusque beats Jake DeBrusque. So he uh, unfortunately has fractured his fibia and therefore will be missing extenuating time, likely over a few months, yeah. which means is hopeful. So could he be could so he could be back for if the bees go deep into the playoffs type deal. He right? he could be back by the start of playoffs. That's really optimistic though. So he's gonna be later in the play. So he might not be back right. till May. It's hard to tell. Some guys heal really fast. Uh he's only twenty six himself, so okay. he could heal quick. All right. And also to the uh twenty twenty four winter classic, I believe will be hosted by the Kraken yeah. in Seattle. And they will be playing Las Vegas. So it's gonna be the battle of the expansion teams in the winter classic. So I love I'm it. I'm happy to see that. Hockey in Seattle, it's going well there too. So fucking right, baby. Let's yeah. go. Seattle by twenty twenty four. Yeah. It'll be a solid squad. I can't wait. Ovi. How nasty is Ovi right now? So what does Alex. this guy do? So he has 808 career goals right now. So the other night he threw up a hat trick on the Habs, <laughs> right? And a 9-2 fucking yeah. routing, okay? And then and then all the – did you see all the Habs moms took a picture of him? I was him just going to say, and then he fucking goes and gets a photo with all the Habs moms just to rub <laughs> it in. So Because it was the mom's trip in yeah. freaking Washington, so all the moms wanted to get a photo with Ovi. <laughs> So Ovi is now second all time in goals. Uh, he's less than a hundred away from Wayne Gretzky. So I give it within the next, I think um, in the next two years, maximum, I think he's going to play until he does it. He can score fucking, he could play another two years. You figure two to three years, three years and score 30 goals a year and, and, and have it. So that's what I'm saying. It's I, gonna, think three. I think, I think he's going to have it before three. Before even the start of the third, uh, I maybe in the third season. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm saying like two and a half, probably. Yeah. Depending yeah. on he knew who knows. Maybe he goes on a fucking tear in the second. He seemed to be. He's playing very well right now. They're, so we'll see. The Caps are doing okay, but like their future is very dim as it comes they, to prospects. So they got a couple guys coming back from from injury too. Tom Wilson's coming back soon. And there was another one coming back soon too. I feel like fuck. Who was it? There Oshie? was another, huh? Oshi. It might be. Is he out right now? I think so. I know. I know. A, I know. There was John, another big piece. Tying it in. John Carlson just got hurt. He took a slap shot in the face. Yes. And yeah, he will was... be out with extended time. It very ugly play. Mm-hmm. Puck came up on high. Same thing happened to Mark Stahl years ago. If anyone remembers, hopefully. Uh, this doesn't affect any eye movement or oh, I, tracking. I hate, I hate seeing guys get hit in the face, man. And it's just a freak accident. Like it's the craziest it's part is. So for those who don't really like, I'm not saying don't understand hockey, but just don't understand how fast, like something can, something can like change on the ice for a puck to just like shoot the other way. All it literally takes, somebody could barely touch it with their stick and it could be fucking five feet the other way. Like that's the scary part about, about how these guys can like, they shoot so hard too. Right. It's, and like, I don't get it. Guys are teeing them up from the point, like 90 plus miles an hour. And there's three guys standing out front. They don't wear a face mask. They don't any, and they're just standing out front of the net. Like, how could you stand there? I couldn't do it. I know it's in it. Let me tell you a frozen puck anywhere on the body. Hurts. (laughs) Hurts. <laughs> yeah. Been now in the face. Oh. Yeah, it sucks, dude. Um, JT Miller. Did you see that shit? Yes, I did. So he was standing. So to explain to everybody kind of how it was going on. So, um, the Canucks were getting ready to pull the goalie, I believe. So what they were doing. So he was standing at the back of the net. So he was standing behind the goalie, and he started like slashing the net, and he was like screaming at the goalie, like trying to get him to leave the net. But here's the thing. Normally they don't, the goalie won't go until they start to break up the ice. Right. You know what I mean? But he wanted him to go early. I can kind of see it from both sides because he's probably thinking behind the net, if you're out, that gives me another option to move the puck. Right. Cause yeah. then everybody's going to be in motion. Everybody's going to be moving. Everybody's 
but like I don't know I could see it from both sides but I could see the goalie like well I'm looking for my coach and he's not giving me the signal to come no. so and the, co- the coach actually uh Bedreau told him to go back oh did he he was coming into the zone and told him hey go back in the net go back in the net because he wanted Miller to go- circle around get possession then you come right yeah of course all How of a sudden, he sits night. behind the net like they're on a power play. Hi, hi, he starts screaming at him. Yeah. What? Not not a good look. Not a good look. Not a good look at all, especially when you sign that monster contract and you're wearing the A. Yeah. I, I don't say anything else. <laughs> well, me. here's what I'll say. He's. I watched an interview with him the other day, and he was – very self-serving like he's I, he's like everyone's like oh about your uh you have a lack of offensive production and he's like oh i think my lack of offensive production is a testament to how good i've been all around the ice yeah so whatever i'll listen I'll, offense I'll, so i'll just say yeah, he's, he's like i'll sacrifice my offense uh to be a better defense that's why my points are so low yeah but are you're you kidding paid, me yeah you're paid to be offensive bro. yeah and guess not only that He's one of the lowest in expected goals for against when he's on the mm-hmm. ice. Mm-hmm. Guess but what? I'm hearing, I'm hearing through through the league and this and that that he's number one on being an asshole too. So we'll, you know, oh, so yeah. we'll do yeah, So we'll just leave it at that. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, the Leafs. So the Leafs got fined a hundred thousand dollars by the CBA for violating a collective bargaining agreement by um traveling during the league's mandated Christmas break. Mm -hmm. So what the Leafs did is they were scheduled to travel to St. Louis. They had a game there, so they were getting ready to go there. So technically they're not supposed to travel from the 23rd to the 26th. So what the Leafs did is on, so I believe they had, um, they had St. Louis on the 27th in St. Louis, I want to say. So what they did is the team agreed, or I don't know, they they had to have agreed, obviously they left. So that they were going to leave because they wanted to wake up in St. Louis, which is fine. However, so the Leafs took off at 1030 at night. They took off. Well, technically that was still the 26th. So now they were violating, you know, the rule. So they got a $100,000 fine. The team. Right. So think about this, though. If they would have just waited an extra hour and a half and took off at midnight, they would have avoided that hundred thousand dollar fine. An hour and a half. What is an hour and a half going to do? Then what you do is you give, you give the guys a day off, or you have a light morning skate, or exactly. like optional skate. You know what I mean? And you, it's an hour and a half later. You're yeah. getting into St. Louis. You're going to get escorted to your hotel, and everything. Anyways, everything's going to. You can be wheels up at fucking midnight, laying in your bed there by three-ish and you can sleep on the fucking plane yeah and sleep sleep until you know 8 39 yeah because let's then face get it. up and do your morning skate at 11 yeah because let's face it they're not roughing it so they probably have a nice jet and shit like that so oh, trust yeah. me they're the richest team in the league for a fucking reason so even though that 100k is fucking nothing for them that's chump change to, to the honest honest organization. question are they the richest or is it they the get, habs they uh they gotta be top three I, I know they're top three, but I feel like I know Chicago's pretty rich too. Mm. They don't play like it, but well, that's what happens when you give two players ten mil. Mm-hmm. I have a feeling they're going to lose those two players too. Yes. But... Oh wait. Well, no. Never shoot mind. it. No, 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 no. I was I was just going to take a shot at the Leafs. <laughs> I said two players and ten mil plus. So, Bonk. <laughs> they, didn't, hey, they didn't win the cup since they signed those contracts. So. We have yet to see a player over 10 million win a cup in the salary mm-hmm. cap era. Mm-hmm. Nate Mack is taking that personally this year. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going wrong. And he's a complete psychopath, too. So he's so good. <laughs> he's so, he's good. so funny. Yeah. He don't give a fuck of that them, guy. Where the guy's like, uh, hey, hey, Nick, I know you're a gamer. And, uh, I'm just curious. You guys have lost three years in a row in the second round. You ever just want to say, F it, let's win this thing? <laughs> and Nick's in, uh, N- Nate just goes, what? <laughs> and he looks at the guy like, like they just lost. That's the best question. Like he starts out the question, I know you're a gamer. Yeah, that's fucking funny. That's funny. <laughs> that guy just lost a few brain cells listening to that. Like, 
Speaking of fucking gamers, Tage Thompson. This kid. That guy is gross. Here's the thing, too. So he picked up his third hat trick of, of the season, which happened to be an overtime goal against Washington, which was goal number 30. Honestly, yeah. we're not even at the all-star break. He's got 30. Um, So that was against Washington. How good is this guy, though? He's huge. He's fast. He's explosive. He's got a great shot. He sees the ice very well. This guy, when when they pair him up with um, who is, has he been playing with there? Tuck. I think it's Tuck. He's been Alex Tuck. With. Yes. So he's been playing with him a little bit. When you put those two together, they are something special to watch, man. Oh yeah, I think uh, he plays with Jeff Skinner as well. Yes, a and talent that, as well. Those, are they all playing on the same line? Right. Yes. Okay. I, look at that line. Look, that's a fucking nice line, dude. That's a lot of that's a lot of talent on one line. Would you yeah. kind of well, you snap got the it size, speed, and strength? Would you, or what? Would you Sorry, kind of spread them out a little bit, or would you just well, keep them together? They, you know, Buffalo has been roll like they're doing okay. They always kind of have that start where, like, the first two months, you're like, "Oh, okay, Buffalo can make some noise," and then that noise ends up being like sad crying. I think but, they're doing better than expected. Uh. We say I that was expecting year. them, yeah, but I was expecting them to lay a fucking egg. They're not even as close to no, okay. Well, right now they're above the wings, but they have one more game played, but still they're 19 15 and two. But winning record, actually, I'm looking right now. What's that? Fifth, they have the fifth highest plus minus in the league. Boom. And they're in 19th. They have a plus 21 goals differential. That's what I mean, man. They're not as bad as everybody thinks they are. More like, more like Tage Thompson has a yeah, plus 21 yeah, goals true, differential. Because he's just fucking putting everybody on his back Oh, here. my gosh. It's big enough. Fuck, the guy's hey, in like Speaking of that, point. though, putting everyone on his back, heart trophy consideration, I think so. I would say so, yeah. Fuck yeah. Buffalo makes the playoffs. He's top three. So Yeah. If they make the playoffs, that's a huge if. Which is probably no, but mm-hmm. we'll see. We'll see. Speaking of the Stanley Cup favorites. Yes. I have some of the odds of, Let's teams, of teams to win the Stanley Cup. Who do you think's number one? Who do you think? Uh, I don't know. Just take a stab. Boston? Out. Boston? Boston's number two, plus 600. You're close. You want me to? You do you want me to just tell you? Who? Colorado. Colorado's still number one. Why? It goes Colorado, Boston, Vegas, Carolina, New Jersey, Toronto, Tampa, Calgary, Florida, and Dallas. They range from plus five hundred Colorado. Dallas is a plus eighteen hundred. As we speak, even though they have game like games in hand, they're out of a playoff spot. I know. But they're they've been hit with the injury bug too as well, right? Yeah, like their top six for a while looked like an AHL squad. So that's what I mean. So I I I expect them to go on a roar the second half of the season. Now they're starting to get everybody back. Right. They'll they'll go on a tear, and everyone knows that. Uh, I'm pretty sure Canada about... scored again because Steph's yelling upstairs. Yeah. I I think it's three two because I heard her say something about two two. Oh, it's three two Canada. Logan Stankovin, and then another Canada goal. As of now, I don't know who it is. I know. I can hear everybody yelling, so it was just scored. Well, there yeah, we so are. Those, yeah, here we are. Don't worry. We're almost done, buddy. <laughs> I don't. I'm going to say like, like you, man. I'm hearing them fucking celebrating and everything upstairs. I want to go watch it, too. So those are your, so those are your, uh, are your top 10 for your Stanley Cup odds. McDavid, you had some stuff on Connor McDavid, right? McJesus? Yes. yes, he is. Uh... He seems to find himself in this position every year where he's making everyone go and yeah. make their jaw hit the floor. Like he's so in 39 games played this year, he has 33 goals, 40 assists, and 73 points, and is a plus four. How's that? Hey, <laughs> how's almost two points per game in the salary cap era? Yeah, is that good? <laughs> I don't know, maybe a little bit. Teach him how to hockey. <laughs> and he's twenty and the other night he surpassed Pavel Dimitri to the top two hundred scores in NHL history, and he is only twenty five. What did he do? Sorry, you cut out. 
Oh, of course I did. Anyway, uh, so the other night, he surpassed Pavel Dimitra to become one of the top 200 scorers in NHL history. At 25. At 25. Not a big he, deal. And listen to this. In 526 games played, he has 272 goals, 498 assists for 770 points. Is that good? Yeah. <laughs> two, like two more years, <laughs> it's a thousand. Yeah. At 27. Yeah. That's nuts, dude. Yeah, he's he's something special, man. But I think by next year we're gonna have him and the other Connor in the same league. Look Can't out. wait to see those two play against each other. They're Look. both so fucking fast too. It's insane. Yeah. Um, Verona, Red Wings waived him. He cleared waivers, so now he's down with Grand Rapids. Yes. Do you think? They're looking to move him, or do you think they're just looking to get him in gear to bring him back up to the big club? So there's a couple of different philosophies. I was going through this turmoil the other day because I love Verana. He's an incredible talent. He's just been hit hard by the injury bug since coming to the wings, and he also got hit with uh, a situation which we don't know of, whether it was mental health or substance abuse. Mm-hmm in the player assistance program yeah for two years or two years there we go two months yeah which is good though he's 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 gotta gotta get everything in check here right exactly but here's the here's my issue is something may have persisted in that range for him to be waived like i understand he's got five mil which is a hard cap it for a lot of teams to take at the same point this is a guy who could score 35 to 40 if he plays to his full potential Last mm-hmm. year, in expected goals for per 60 minutes, only one player was ahead of him, Austin Matthews. That tells Pablo. you his shooting percentage, just how good he is. He has a crazy mm-hmm. wrist shot, and his speed is unmatched on the wings. He's actually faster than Larkin, if you watch. Don't mm-hmm. believe me, watch it. <laughs> it's just, it's really sad to see. I think what it is, is it's more of a, I don't want, I, as much as I hate to say it, it could mean a breakup between mm-hmm. the wings and him and uh, a mutual agreement that he just doesn't like um, the situation he's in. Mm-hmm. I don't so know. He, it's They could probably get something nice for him. Exactly. So that's why them sending him down and taking that risk of someone trying to claim him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah it's, it just... it's a weird situation. When I, when I first seen it, I was like, whoa. Yeah. Like, I didn't know what the hell was going on. I thought it was, but I almost I should have messaged fucking and fucking seeing what was up. But uh, yeah, man, crazy, crazy, crazy. Oh, you said the yep. Sharks are looking to move Meyer, correct? Possibly. Uh, yeah, because of the fact that it's it's looking unlikely right now. Because Meyer, you know, last year was in the Hart Trophy considerations for what he did with the team, and right now. He's the on the outside looking in for contract extension. You know, he's probably a player with his talent, size, mm-hmm. ability, his shot. He could bring in around nine mil. He's a very talented forward, and the Sharks just don't want to hand out that kind of money right now. They're looking mm-hmm. to rebuild, get rid of big contracts that they have already, i.e. um Eric Carlson. Uh who's the other defenseman who does nothing and he's got a massive cap hit. Carlson, I would almost want to keep though the way he's been this season. Fuck, he looks like the old Eric yeah, Carlson right but, now. But but they're not gonna do anything with him. That's the problem. Yeah, but who's gonna take that fucking cap hit though? The Sharks would oh, have to eat up a lot of salary. Yeah, if they retain twenty five or at 50. most fifty percent, mm-hmm. they still net a good amount. Maybe Stevie will take a rip at him. We'll see. We'll see. Nice the wings to have got, like the wings got hit years. hard by the injury bug as well. So mm-hmm. I I think they're just going to sit tight, see mm-hmm. what's going on. They got some guys coming back this week. Uh, Fabry's expected back. Zadina by the end of the month. Mm-hmm. Bertuzzi probably about the same. Vrana when he gets done with the AHL. We'll see. Uh, I think they should just sit tight and we'll look. So uh, who knows? Who knows? Fair enough. Uh, you said the Rangers also extend Jimmy Vesey, right? Yeah, I believe it was uh, two years at 925, which is a good cap it for a guy who's, yeah. you know, third or fourth line. 
he'll mm-hmm. jump in and play for you. Like he's good. He was a former Hobie Baker winner in the NCAA. Yeah. Very good player. So that's, um, that's cheap help too, man, for a guy like exactly. that. Exactly. Cap friendly, yeah. baby. But see, some guys, like, I don't want to say that he's trying to stay in the league, but a lot of guys that were like that, that had signed those bigger deals are now on, they like, they know that they're kind of on the back half, right? So, yeah. or the back nine, I should say, of their mm-hmm. career. So they're kind of settling for less so they could stay in the league and stuff like that. The only part that sucks is some of those guys that are now battling for spots with all these younger guys, right? So right, some of them are getting health bombed and this and that. So, And you know what? I really like that guys like that are willing to stay in the league, you mm-hmm. know, just to play in the NHL, right? Mm-hmm. As opposed to, oh, I'm good here, but I could make three and a half mil and go play in the K and be a star. Yeah. No, they want to play in the NHL. They want to go for that Stanley Cup, right? And uh, it, it really shows character on how those players are, at least the ones who stay in North America. Mm-hmm. So It's the best league in the world for a reason, buddy. It is. It is. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, Carlson, we already talked about that was kind of down in my notes. Speaking of health bombs, yeah. Last thing, this is the last thing I got. I don't know if you got anything else after this, but Lafreniere got health bombed. Rumors could be a trade possibly coming up. So, what I want to ask you, um, Tristan, is do you think the Rangers are going to deal him? And if they do, where do you think would be a couple good spots for him to go? Well, first of all, I will say that. I'm not going to say anything. It's too hard to tell. Um, it's. Do you think you know, he? I, do you think he'll be moved? Yes, I don't think Lafreniere spends the rest of his entry level contract with the Rangers. I think this year or next year, he's on the outs. Uh, Rangers really hard time developing their prospects. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, if any rem- remembers him, you know, really highly touted centerman. Mm-hmm. Taken, I want to say seventh overall. Like, who is that you said? Leosh Anderson. Oh, okay. And now he's like a third liner in LA. Like, it's it's sad to see. Like, Lafreniere, incredible talent in the QMJHL with Hamuski Oceanic. Mm-hmm. Comes to the NHL. Mediocre. He's good. Don't get me wrong. He's very good two way. Like he's very sound hockey player, yeah. but he's not that all star that you're hoping to get with a first round pick mm-hmm. or first overall for that matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know what's gonna happen when it comes to uh, Lafreniere. I'll say, I'll say, if if you were to get dealt, I think a team that could look at something is Vancouver. Yeah. Because they, I know they had interest in him as soon as he was drafted. I know they really, really liked Lafreniere. And as soon as last year that there was some talks that he was mm, maybe not playing that good. Same with Capo Caco. Mm-hmm. Vancouver was jumping in on that. And Vancouver's got a guy that they can move who's playing well is Andre Kuzmenko. Mm-hmm. He's a UFA. Uh, if anyone remembers, they signed him over the summer. He came from the KHL. Actually, really good young guy. 26 years old. Mm-hmm. Uh, good find by Vancouver there. But... I think there could be a swapping there with maybe a first plus Kuzmenko and maybe you know a what I was I was literally just thinking too man that that's a good point that him coming in there because I could see um, him possibly going there because I'm pretty sure Horvat's going to be on the way out correct. So do you think that could yep, be Hor- that? So anyone, that- anyone, the uh, the owner of the Canucks himself said uh, the only unprotect no, like the only untouchables right now are Pedersen and Hughes. Yeah. Which is no. right, rightfully so. Exactly. But. You're going to see. Well, I really like Hobo Horvat, though. He's one of my favorite players in the league, and I really wish he could keep be kept there. But once again, the virus that is. Mm. Uh, no, I hear you. I, I'm i so mad at myself. I literally just. JT <laughs> Miller. There we go. Yeah. Can't even use his f- first name. What a loser. <laughs> <laughs> what even is it? JT. That's funny. I don't even Who knows? know. He probably doesn't even know. His parents just told him. He, he, <laughs> JT. Yeah, JT. Just <laughs> that's funny. Um, on that note, bro, I'm but, tapped. Uh, Would like, well, like, what do you think? You got anything else? Or are you tapped? I uh, I will say one more thing, and yeah, I know it's gonna sound like a Homer thing, but Lafreniere in sort of a redemption story because the Wings got uh, screwed on that first round pick that year. Mm-hmm. If you could go to Detroit. I wouldn't possibly mind it. in exchange for Bertuzzi. Yeah, true. 
We'll see. We'll see. But when you get a guy like that who's first round pick, like it's a second year and you're healthy scratching him, like yeah. at that point, like his contract right now is waiver exempt. They could send him to the minors, no problem. Mm-hmm. So I don't know why you're healthy scratching a guy. I mean, send mm-hmm. him to the minors, let him dominate there, get his confidence back. Like like uh, S- Seattle did there with uh, Shane Wright. Mm-hmm. I hear you. Yeah, or what the Wings way. tried to do with Vrana. We'll see yeah. how that goes. But yeah, I hear you. Um, on that note, let's go watch the game. Yes. All right, go everybody. Canada. <laughs> go Canada. We're out here. Aunt Tristan signing off. Until next week. See you. See y'all.